Yeah, and like I said, it was like the in-person kind of redeemed the train goal. Like I went into my first day like kind of like, I don't, holy shit, I don't know if I can do this all. Mm. And then finished my first shift and I was like, okay. It, it made it a lot easier, like the way things were explained. And then actually seeing it in practice, like the train goal makes it seem like a lot, but when you're actually physically doing it, it's not bad. Okay. Um, so I think like it's just, yeah, um, I, if the train wheel could be cut in any way that's not too important to like the actual role, I think that would be good. So when you, were, next when you were going through the train wheel uh, and you came, before you came in, you were like, I don't know if I could do this, meaning like there's so much stuff to do? It was a lot of, yeah. It was like every role was so, it's, I think it was the detail with every train wheel. Like every responsibility had like, all these different parts to it and all those different parts had trainings and it was so specific mm -hmm. which I think would be like I said it's good to look back on I like it now I can just search so, the training what comes up okay right so it's helpful now but when you're first learning it it's so what if it's overwhelming and I, I usually like this idea of like visualize like get them to visualize themselves already through the program yeah you know what I mean so it's like it's a pretty um it's a pretty daunting journey to like be here and I need to get here. But now if I just kind of flash forward and I see myself again, feet in the sand sort of aspect and I can get that person kind of like feel it and touch it. So that guy at the wedding, when he was talking about his wedding and we're like dreaming about what his wedding, like, dude, what does that look like for your wedding at the top when you're labeling and you're, and you're clarifying why he's here. I want to get in shape for my wedding. Well, what does that actually mean? Is that weight loss? Is that uh, popping, you know, biceps out of your suit? Like, yeah. is it looking great in your cowboy hat or your rehearsal dinner? Like, what is that? Yeah. And that, and then you can kind of pull that back at the end when it's selling the vacation of like, dude, when you were talking about looking in great shape for your wedding, like, this is literally designed to help you lose those ten pounds and keep them off yeah. because strength training you don't yo-yo. Yeah. And he's like, dude, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. That's when you know you got it. What, uh, paint paint me the ideal picture of a design partner. Like, what what would be what would be the thing that you're looking for? Um, it's just so I have expectations of, of just so I have expectations of what your guys' goals are and and, um, and how this works. Okay. So so just to say it back, so it's um, it's it's either surfacing or talking about pain points that I'm having as a business owner within the context of, of my business or my CRM. Uh, and just talking about that problem, not necessarily providing a solution, maybe providing a solution and then you guys building it, but just giving, that's kind of like one phase. The other is real-time feedback on uh, things that you're building to, to, to Nikhil's point to see is, are we even solving um, something that business owners care about or are we chasing a, a trail that is like not even relevant to business owners? And I can be that voice of like, you know, hey, at least in my world, I don't give a fuck about that or I'm not spending any time on that or that doesn't help me at all. And just being transparent and honest about those things. Okay, cool. I'm on the same page. Yeah, I, honestly, I, I don't fully know what I'm getting into. I'm excited to talk with two guys that are out there trying to build something. Um, I always get jazzed talking to founders. Like, in my world, is like, what would be a perfect outcome for this is, like, I hopped into this thing not really knowing what to expect. And out the other end, I was very pleasantly surprised by like real practical, actionable things that net moved the needle on my business that I, I was just too naive and, and or, or didn't even know that we could potentially get out the other end. In addition to having some fun conversations about like, you know, building stuff and like the founder kind of like, you know, sl <laughs> slap on the back kind of things, you know, like that's fun. But like, man, if I came out of this with like, dude, these guys, here was the experiment that we ran. We, I knew my lead conversion was this. And then we did X, Y, Z. And three months later, we fucking are right here and we can like see it and track it. Um, that, that, would be a, that would be a really big win for me. Basically, like in short, I'll capture that lead on the website or through like a lead form. That will go into HubSpot. And then from there, it will trigger my different marketing campaigns based on location. So which location are they interested in? And then sending them the pass, you know, that way. And then from there, it's the sales process. Lead comes in, lead, uh, lead. we capture the contact information. That lead is emailed and texted, uh, instructions on how to get set up on the pass. 
if that lead does not purchase the pass as a series of automations to get them to purchase the pass. Uh, once they purchase a pass, that moves them over into the next workflow where it's to get them to show up. And then once they're in the, in the actual studio, the, the, the studio manager and the head coach are just both basically the purveyors of providing a really good sales experience. And then if the, if the prospect doesn't, or the lead does not convert on their own, then the studio manager is the one who's responsible for the sales and the follow-up process.